Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we just all lift up our hands towards heaven? If possible, close your eyes. And let our tongue be loosened to praise this living God. Come on, slowly. Let me hear you praise. Abba, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Holy Spirit of God, we praise you. Abba, we exalt your holy and matchless name, O Lord. Father God, we glorify your name, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Abba, we praise and we worship and we adore you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Just thank him for all the things that he had done in your life. Count your blessings one after the other. Psalmist says, early in the morning, Father, I raise before you and I lift up your praises. Hallelujah, Lord. The more and more I praise you, Father God, my soul is strengthened. My bone is strengthened, O Lord. My, my spirit is strengthened. Hallelujah, Lord. In your presence, my Holy Spirit, in the presence of God, my spirit is united with the Holy Spirit Hallelujah Lord And therefore my heart will be filled with the love and joy of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah Lord And therefore I praise my living God Father you are the Alpha and the Omega You are the first and the last You are the beginning and the end You are the King of glory Hallelujah Lord Holy Spirit of God we bless you Jesus Christ Hallelujah Lord Come on brothers and sisters Just lift it up Lift it up Praise this God God we praise you Jesus Praise you Father Hallelujah 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 Father we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. Spirit of God, we praise you, Lord. One God, we praise you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, 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 glory to the Lamp of God. Hosanna in thy ears. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you, Father God. We adore you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. We magnify your matchless name. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift up your name. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, glory to you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. King of glory, my Lord my Savior, my Redeemer, my refuge and my fortress. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. You are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my refuge. You are my strength. You are my shield. You are my hiding place, O Lord. And we bless you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. I open my heart wide open before the Lamb of God. And I lay down myself before the crown of the grace. And I press the name of God and I worship this living God and I worship this living God hallelujah praise praise you Jesus praise you father praise you Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord can I hear praise the Lord loudly praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah come on you can do it better hallelujah hallelujah so when I hear a loud I live, you know, I get encouraged in my spirit. That's why I'm asking you to tell. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, today being the last day of NFC, and we've been meditating on this theme, rooted and grounded in love. And today we have two very important talks that's coming up down the line uh, where our leaders will be talking the battle that we are having against having this love that God has asked us, you and me, to have that many brothers and sisters. And today what I would be taking you through is the summary of the last two days that you've been hearing all about the love, right from day one until the very last talk that Brother Ben shared. And then we're going to lay a foundation to know how love of God is operating in us and also to understand the challenges that the love of God uh, is having within us where the enemy comes and takes it away. And, and, and that, that is going to be led in the next day, I mean the next session. Can we turn a Bible to uh, Ephesians chapter 1? Sorry, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. Today I've been asked to preach on this topic, fruit of love. And we're going to start with Ephesians 5 1 and then we'll take it from there. Therefore, be... The, therefore... Be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. As beloved children. As beloved children. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore be imitators 
of God. As a beloved children. Do you all want to be like God? Right from the very beginning, there is a small line of deception that happens right from the day of uh, the, the day Adam and Eve had that. See, everyone has the thought of having the very characteristics and the very nature of God to be in us. The very calling that you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, are having is that we should have and possess the very knowledge and the nature that God is inhibiting right from the day he created until now. And that is the very thought that we should be having. And that is a slight deflection that where Adam and Eve was deceived is, do you want to be like God? But Paul goes on to say very nicely, he says, be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. In that way, you can be surely, surely very, very clear how you will be leading your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, um, the fruit of love, I wanted to break it into three things. First, we'll talk about the very thing called fruit. And then we'll talk about love. Again, in love, I wanted to focus on one, the aspect of God loving us and then we loving God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, in, in, in today's world or any, any day, when Adam and Eve was created, they had everything. Right? Uh, what did God create on day one? Just open your Bible and just see Genesis 1, what God created on day one. Right? He formed the heavens and the earth. And then they, he said, let there be light. What did uh, God create on day two? Just scroll through. Scroll through. No problem. <laughs> it's not a uh, question and answer. Just to get yourself familiarized. And, and God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. Praise the Lord. Just quickly read uh, what we created on day three. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Praise the Lord. Day 4. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. Praise the Lord. Day 5. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding yielding seed according to their own kinds and the trees bearing fruit in which is their seed. Praise Each. the Lord. Yeah. We see he created the heavens and the earth, the water and everything and then he created the fishes and then the vegetations and every trees, every kinds and in, in further if you go and read you, you will see that he created every animals, every creatures and we all know on day six he created the human beings. You see, God was not satisfied by himself of just having an earth that was empty. And then God saw, okay, it is good. Still, there is something that is lacking. He went on to create something else. And then he says, it is good. And he still goes on to create something else. And he says, it is still good, but he goes on to create something else. And eventually, he gets satisfied only after creating human being and that's when it says God rested. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is one nature of God imbibing himself into us. That's why it says let us go create man in our own image and likeness. And therefore we should have that very image of God into us. 
Now, my now, my dear brothers and sisters, if you take the fruit as a whole, fruit doesn't come by itself, right? Fruit doesn't come by itself. Fruit has to be be part of the tree, the branch. It should take away the take off every nutrition that is possible, and then we have to uh, have that fruit. And again, once the fruit is there in your hand. there is a thing that happens it's not just you taste the fruit but also it has a seed which you will go on to bring something out in in the days later correct now tell me why do we need to be rooted and grounded in love you know sometimes in bible i like this dots dot 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 and then something and then again dot 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 it has something to say you know it has something to lead it has something to bind us into this praise the lord tell me why why do we need to be rooted and grounded in love there's a purpose need to be there just turn with me to ephesians to this chapter chapter 3 let's read verse 16 the the previous verse and verses 18 and 19 first let's read verse 16 chapter 3 verse 16 ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being praise the lord you need to be strengthened in your inner being by the riches and the glory is that what it is written in your bible you need to be strengthened in your inner being therefore the love of god is necessary for my inner being to be strengthened praise the lord and it goes on to say in verse 17 that christ may dwell in your heart so that you be rooted and grounded in love and let's read verse 18 and 19 rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God praise the lord the second part says that you may know the love of god know the love of god tell tell to your neighbors know the love of god come on come on Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You see, you need to have that strength in your inner being. You need to have that very strength to comprehend the understanding of knowing the love of God is where this whole crux of understanding the love of God comes my dear brothers and sisters. And that's why Paul goes on to say in in Ephesians um five we imitators of god praise the lord what what is a tree that is bearing a fruit will look like in 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 christian world is something that we need to be very very mindful of my dear brothers and sisters there are there is a tree and every tree has few characteristics see not all tree bear fruit do you agree not all tree bear fruit and even if a tree bears fruit not all fruits will be edible praise the lord even if the trees that are bearing edible fruits not all will be as tasty as what the other tree of the fruits of the other tree as as be if you see a tree that is there it doesn't bear any fruit there is a tree that bears fruit but it is not edible there is a tree that bears fruit but it is not as tasty as what that tree or the nature of that fruit has to be in our lives at one stage of our life or at any point of time god asks us to be fruitful and that fruit to last long and bible very clearly says in john chapter 15 unless and until you abide in me and you 
being the branch abiding in my tree you will not be able to bear fruit so it is very very clear that our fruit is not dependent on myself unless and i am rooted unless and i am grounded unless i am knitted into the branch that god is asking me i cannot bear a fruit that jesus tries to ask of me and what is my state can we just turn our bible to ezekiel chapter 15 turn with me Eze- ezekiel chapter 15 and let's read um, verse 4 and 5 behold it is given to the fire for fuel when the fire has consumed both ends of it and the middle of it is charred is it useful for any anything let's read the next verse also behold when it was whole it was used for nothing but much less when the fire has consumed it and it and it is charred can it ever be used for anything praise the lord read uh, verse 2 also strange son of man how does the wood of wood of the vine surpass any wood the vine branch that is among the trees of the forest praise the lord the wood of the vine is like you and me by the brothers and sisters it is of no use once the fruit is cut off you cannot take a wood of a vine and make something like this you know you cannot take wood of wine and make something like an altar table you cannot take a wood of wine and make you a stand also it says if if it is charged charred you get nothing out of it the moment the love of god is taken out of me i have to realize one thing that i am nothing praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord therefore god says we need to have that fruit which bears good all the time or the the, the very good thing that we should bear is this love of god now we now tell me one thing let's keep to your mind and um, ask the moment adam and eve ate the fruit that fruit was not cultivated by them they didn't water it it was given to them just like that all they have to do is just run around see whatever the fruit they find it tasty or pleasing to their eyes they used to take and there's only one tree that was been forbidden from them and then eventually they had that fruit god came and he called uh, adam what was adam doing with immediately after taking the fruit he went and hid himself right and then god called out adam and what did adam say come on you know the story what did adam say to god yes sister what did god adam say the fruit the woman that you gave to me made me to eat that fruit then what did god say what what did god do he went to the woman and he asked something to the woman right woman is it so and what did the woman say the serpent you understand one thing he went and asked adam and he asked adam where are you it's not that god is not knowing that adam is it god knows god knows each and every one of us where we are in our in our deepest pit but he asks where are you because he feels adam why have you distanced myself yourself from me and then the moment god asked this god wanted to hear it from adam like um, matthew is here matthew is going to become lawyer he 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 gives the chance to the accused to defend himself right like like that he gas adam what have you done and then he goes to ask you what have you done and then the moment eve says it is the serpent god doesn't go and ask serpent what have you done 
you know what happens he immediately curses the serpent is it so is that is that what the bible is written he immediately curses the serpent it, it doesn't give a chance to the serpent because there is no need to have that compassion to the serpent but a god is so good that is so compassionate he gives that second chance to you and my dear you and me my dear brothers and sisters tell me one thing what is the biggest challenge the people of israelites had the biggest challenge is the people of israelites had all through the old testament anyone challenge come on to to trust the lord that was a challenge any any other challenge say that again to obey the commandments good what was the biggest challenge that god had with the people of israelites someone said something they were stiff necked hard hearted praise the lord hallelujah just say praise the lord praise the lord come on loudly praise the lord lift up your hands praise the lord hallelujah my brothers and sisters throughout the old testament there is this constant battle that god is always having towards his people is telling them people just trust me you are in the safest hands you need not to worry and um, the moment god took the people of israelites from the land of egypt towards leading them to canaan how many years they walk past the wilderness 40 years and what all the challenges that moses had with his children in in 40 years was he having a very profound nice good relationship with the people or was he having some issues with the people some issues i was asking with our youths for yesterday the first thing they told is yeah they they were not having a good bonding see that's what we read in the bible right throughout the things but constantly time and again god reminds moses even though moses fails god tells moses moses go and tell the people that i do something to them you know what it does he loves them turn with me to deuteronomy uh, chapter 33 verse 3 there is let's let's read from verse 1 there is this last phase of moses is about to die he led he, he spent time with them for 40 years he saw everything the, he saw the uh, the people of god saw the miracles that happened in the land of canaan i mean land of egypt all the 10 plagues and they came to wilderness they asked for food manna was flowing down every day for 40 years it non stop they asked for meat they got meat they asked for water they got fresh water they asked for something and they get they they commit sin after idolatry they they did uh, create this calf and they they at one point of time they were struggling and moses interceded and there were places where they were having wars moses lifted up his hand and then they had that victory over the wars there were situations where some of them been struck by leprosy there were situations where some of them been bitten by the snakes and after all these things moses is about to depart from this world and then is about to bless this people and then he writes this three three verses that we are going to read let's read from deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 1 onwards this is the blessing with which this is the blessing with which moses with which moses God, bless the people of israel bless the people of israel before his death before his death he said the lord came from sinai and dawned from seir upon us he shone forth from mount paran he came from the 10000s of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand yes he loved his people all his holy ones were in his hand so they followed in your footsteps 
receiving directions from you. When Moses commanded us a law as a possession for the assembly of Jacob, thus the Lord became king in Jeshurun. Can, can you just read uh, three again? Yes, he loved his people. Praise the Lord. Say this. Yes, he loved his people. Yes, he loved his people. God loves you and my, me, my dear brothers and sisters. It fascinates me. It questions me. It, it makes me feel what kind of relationship Moses had with this people. After all these things, he goes on to say, even at the dead time, he says, people of God, God loved you. The biggest challenge that the people had at that time was this, that God loves you and me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, I want to take you to three verses quickly to help you understand what love of God can do to you and me. Praise the Lord. Very familiar verses. Quickly we will just read. There is love of God that does something to you and me. And, and then I will take you to what our love or what God is expecting out of our love through, to, through this fruit of uh, love. Praise the Lord. Can we turn our Bible to John 3.16? Very familiar verse. Everyone should be knowing it by heart. But I will just quickly read it so that we get the crux of the message into our hearts. John 3.16. For, for, God, God, so, for yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Praise the Lord. God loved he gave Jesus that you will not perish and you will have eternal life. See, when God loves, he gives us eternal life. When God loves, he gives his son. When God loves, you will not perish. Praise the Lord. Very clear, right? So simple. But see, from God's point of view, it's not that easy. He gave his very beloved son. Yesterday, Sister Rinsi was sharing I, I, um, Isaiah 53. And the verses she quoted, everything was so, so strong in understanding what Jesus had went through. And eventually we get this beautiful gift of eternal life. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Again, this verse talks about the word of God. Sorry, the love of God. And it does something to us through this love. Let's read it. See what kind of love. See with what kind of love. The father has given to us. The father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. That we should be called what? Children of God. Children of God. I love this one analogy that Paul writes. I think in... Uh, Galatians, it says, we are Gentiles. We are not of the tribe of the dual tribes. We don't have that descendant. We don't have the genealogy. We don't have that history and all that. But yet, God chose you and me. God chose what is lovely, what God chose, what is seemed to be foolish in the sight of God and he raised us to himself and he made one with the people of Jews. And that's what God says here beautifully. The love of God is making you and me as the sons and the daughters of the living God. Praise the Lord. The love of God is making you and me as the sons of God. You and me as a daughter of God. And that is the reason God constantly tells that he loves you. I'll give you one more verse. which talks about the love of God. G turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. And let's read um, verse 2. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Christ 
loved us and he gave himself as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to god the atonement the sin offering the peace offering and all that we need to access that holy of holies is been granted to us through one act that is christ loved us praise the lord hallelujah come on praise the lord praise lord hallelujah 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 just lift up your hands hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah god's love is giving us the access to enter the throne of god god's love is helping us to have that very eternal life that you and me doesn't deserve god's love is making you and me as the sons and daughters of god which we don't claim to be but we have all this because god loves us praise the lord now you tell me one thing the moment people of god started understanding the love of god and there are few people went about in telling people about the love of god and there are certain things that i want you to understand my dear brothers and sisters and this is going to be the core of what we need to understand and when we understand this and when brother savi and brother stanley is going to speak about the 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 enemy of having that very love of god in you you're going to understand what we are failing to miss my dear brothers and sisters why do we have to love god in our catechism classes back in our school days we had no why do we why god created us anyone simple answers to love him to serve him praise the lord and and any time did you ask why do we have to love god you know thank you thank you you know the 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 beauty of that is what we read in uh, ephesians 5:1 be imitators of god god loves me therefore i love him god loves me therefore i love my brethren god loves me therefore i love my parents i always like paul writing this in um, galatians he writes it beautifully which i feel we should have um, understanding of this can we turn our bible to galatians chapter 5 and let's read uh, verse 1 for freedom christ has set us free stand firm therefore and do not submit to a yoke of slavery praise the lord for what god has called us God has called us to have that very freedom. Praise the Lord. Freedom from what? Freedom from the yoke of slavery. Turn with me to uh, Genesis chapter 1. Sorry, 3. I think it's in verse 17 where God curses the land. and it's, to adam he said and to adam he said because you have listened to the voice of your voice your wife because you listen to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of and and have eaten the tree of which i have commanded you which i commanded you you shall not eat of it you shall not eat of it cursed is the ground because of you cursed is the ground because of you god curses the land my dear brothers and sisters we all know this he never had to plant even a single sapling he never had to water even a single sapling the 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 work and the way god has designed this garden itself is it waters itself but the moment he understood we failed to understand the true love and that 
provider of God, he, as a consequence, the land is cursed. And God says, in further verses, it says, you have to go and till and then you have to have your own fruit. That is the first bondage that came into human life. And then God says now, in Galatians 5, God called you for freedom. You don't more have to be worried on this cursed ground which gives you fruit, but rather come to me which I, where I will give you my living bread. Where out of me pours the fount of holiness, the, the fount from that you get that living waters. When he says to the uh, Samaritan woman, he says, right, I have a food of which you don't know. He talks to his uh, disciples. Disciples ask, Lord, did you get a food? Or did you eat? And then he says, I have a food of which you don't know. God is now telling, you don't have to be cursed anymore. You're called for that very freedom that I wanted you to enjoy as a children of God. Praise the Lord. Don't submit to that yoke again. The yoke of slavery. That is the beauty that God is calling you out, my dear brothers and sisters. Can we just turn to um, Matthew chapter 12? I think it's in verse 35. God talks about the good tree, the bad tree, and all that. Let's just, just read uh, verse 35 and uh, 36. 35 says this. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. Praise the Lord. You see, 35, there are three good that God says. A good man, a good thing, or fruit and good stored, stored, the treasure. A good man out of good treasure bears good fruit. A bad man out of bad treasure, evil man out of evil treasure bears evil fruit. Just swap one or two words, see if it makes sense. A good man out of evil treasure bears good fruit. Can, it, that, can that be possible? Think the other way. A evil man out of good treasures bears evil fruit or good fruit. You see, that is the concept or that is the understanding that God is asking you and me to have, my dear brothers and sisters. You cannot wear that love of God unless you have that love treasure that comes from God, unless you are been abiding in Christ Jesus. That is how you become good man. Can I be a good man by my own? No. Can I have a good treasure by my own? No. Can I have a good fruit by my own? No. And therefore, we have to have that very understanding of having to know that I am good as long as I am knitted with Christ. I have a good treasure as long as I understand the very thing that I have with Christ. And then I have to understand the moment these two are set right, I will bear good fruit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we're going to break in another five minutes. If you ask me, the whole crux of the understanding of the love of God, we, we are the fruit, we bear the fruit, we are knitted with Christ. God loves us. He gives us the eternal life. God loves us. He makes us the children of God. God loves us. He, therefore, he gives us that uh, very uh, offering and everything that he did so that you can have that very access. You are justified. You are sanctified. You have that blood of Jesus which makes you everything, what you are, that God expects you to be. And then I read this one thing in Galatians chapter 4 where Paul says this. If we can imbibe and understand and take everything that God 
Paul says it to be. I think that's how we are going to have that as the base. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 4. And let's read, I think it's verse 17. They make much of you, but for no good purpose. They want to shut you out that you may make much of them. Read 18 and 19. It is always good to be made much of for a good purpose and not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Praise the Lord. Let's put this screen. Let's read this. Uh, it's another screen. My dear children. Let's read it. Put the uh, verse, the following verse. Yeah. Let's read it. My Dear children, for whom until Christ is formed in you. My brothers and sisters, just ask this question to yourself. Is Christ formed in you? Now just reflect on that Ephesians 5 1 says, Be imitators of God. Paul says, I have this childbirth kind of anguish that Christ should be formed in you. He says, My dear little children, he says, My dear children, in some versions it says, My dear little children. He sees them as his own beloved so that the end goal of Paul's entire mission and vision is that Christ be formed in you. There's one um, beautiful narration that happens in Numbers chapter 24. There is this um, priest, Pineas, he talks certain, he does certain things which God is very much pleased with. And then the word of God says one thing about him. I feel it is also important for us to just read one thing. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 25 and let's read um, verse 10 and 11 and 12. And the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the people of Israel, in that he was jealous with my jealousy among them, so that I did not consume the people of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore say, Behold, I go to him my covenant of peace. Praise the Lord. Bible says, this Phineas, this priest, had the jealousy of what God had. This version it says, the zeal, the zealous of the zeal of God is what he had. And then God blessed him with this covenant of peace. My dear brothers and sisters, you and me need to carry out that very zeal, that very jealousy of God had through this love of God. I want to... Uh, just say this one last thing. I recently heard one man of God preaching and he said this story. I thought it is important and uh, it's maybe right fit to put this. You know, he said this, there's a man, he was planting um, the saplings and then he had to water the saplings. So what he did, um, he had a monkey, he trained that monkey to water that plant. As he puts the sapling, he grounds it. The monkey follows it with the water and he waters the plant. And he does this. The monkey constantly waters the plant. Every day, day after the day, uh, it, it, the monkey goes on to plant all the plants, water the plants, uh, whatever was there. And one day, this man had to step out for something uh, out of station. And then he saw, okay, the monkey is well equipped to water the plant every day. So he said, okay, I thought you how to do it. I uh, expect you to do it. And he left. 
one day, two day, three day, four day, after a week he comes back. He sees all the plant dried and dead. He was shocked. This monkey was doing this watering of the plant every day, day in, day out, before his eyes. And after a week he comes back, it's all dried out. Then he asks, what have you done? Then he say, the monkey says to that man, I watered the plant, but I wanted to ensure whether the water has reached the root, so I used to uproot and put it back in. My dear brothers and sisters, once you are grounded in love of Christ, don't test yourself in this way, uprooting yourself and see whether you are inclined to Christ. You will dry yourself. I have that very trust of experiencing the love of God and having been knit into the love of Christ. Can we close our eyes? Out of all things, the thing that most important for me is me as a person to be the imitator of God. Out of all things that can I, I can possess, the most important thing that I can have is, am I having Christ formed in me? God loves me, but am I loving God the same way God expects me to love Him? If I love, am I bearing the very fruit that God is expecting me to bear? If I bear, is my fruit lasting long? With that sense, my dear brothers and sisters, let's place ourselves before the altar of God. We'll prepare our hearts for the next two talks where God is going to set us free from every shackles and the bondages and the chains of the enemy. And He's going to help us to set us free. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this time, this hour that you've given to us to come before your presence to know what the love of God is. We thank you, Jesus. We ask you that you make our hearts fertile to receive your words so that we may bear fruit more and more in the days to come. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.